Welcome to our first pitch session of day two of Invest in BC presented by Lumera Ventures. This session features companies within the med tech sector. A reminder to please post your questions in the Q&A section in the top right corner of your screen and or the chat. Um, our presenting companies will keep an eye on that. We're not going to have a Q&A through the pitches, but they will certainly respond following. In addition, we have created a presenting company guide that provides an overview of not only these companies, but all of the companies that are presenting over the two days. It's going to be posted in the chat. Um, please feel free to take a look at that. We have a thriving med tech sector here, um, something that we're very, very proud of. So it's wonderful and our privilege to be able to um, present this section and look at some of the leading edge and innovative, uh, innovative companies that are happening in this space. So um, I am uh, have the pleasure of moderating this session. So up first, we have Dr. Gualtiero Gondoli, um, CEO of Bion Bionic Power. Would you please join the stage, the virtual stage? Hello. Thank you for having me. Welcome. And um, I apologize. I know I did not pronounce your name correctly. So please. It's, uh, don't worry. It's almost impossible to pronounce. It's <laughs> Gualtiero Guadagni. You're too kind. And so uh, can I start? Uh, yes, please do. OK, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, Perfect. Bionic Power is a Canadian early stage medical device company that addresses the large market of pediatric and adult mobility assistance. Specifically, Bionic Power wants to improve the mobility for children with crouch gait. Half a million children in US alone walk with crouch gait. Crouch gait is a degenerative condition arising from cerebral palsy, from spina bifida, and from other neurological pathologies. Despite surgeries and drugs, too many of them will end up in a wheelchair in their adult life. The scientific community agrees that there is an unmet need for system to enhance the effectiveness and the sustainability of physiotherapy for these children. At a worldwide level, such unmet needs represent an addressable market bigger than $5 billion for our device. To address this unmet need, Bionic Power developed the Agilic, an augmented orthosis which can help children out of crouch by supplying a little power, a little torque to their knees. The Agilic is a smart orthosis. Hello? Someone should mute, please. The Agilic is a uh, smart orthosis driven by an AI software which recognizes different phases of the gait and in each phase can assist or resist the motion. In turn, the Agilic is a robotic inch that can be integrated in any custom-made knee, ankle, foot orthosis um, by, made by a professional orthotist. The Agilic is the result of four years of cooperation and co-development between Bionic Power and the American NIH. Dr. Damiano, Dr. Bulle, and their teams at the National Institute of Health in Bethesda developed the clinical concept and the first working prototype. And lately, they are they took care of the clinical validation. Bionic Power <clears throat> leverages its technology platform previously designed and developed for military exoskeleton and developed the final product that is now ready for manufacture. All the design is Bionic Power IP. We designed the motor, we designed the gearbox and all the electrical block of the device. Let me show you a video that it's more powerful than words. And uh, I want to show you in this spina bifida girl, the difference between using and not using our device. Children can enhance their exercise, their mobility and their confidence. Check out all our videos on our website, www.bionicpower.com. <clears throat> Trials and NIH and Vancouver are consistently showing a clinically and statistically significant improvement in gait biomechanics all across our patient cohort. 
it's a little complicated to explain you this graph, but basically what you are seeing is uh, an improvement in knee extension. So the children can walk straighter and stand taller. <clears throat> Researchers are also observing a training effect without complicating too much. The red line is uh, normal walking without our device before the training, and the green line is after the training. And everything shows that the green light is closer to the uh, perfect gate that you can have. The Agilic device is now registered with the FDA, with El Canada, and SCE Mark. <clears throat> we have a well-defined go-to-market strategy based uh, through a channels of sales. <clears throat> we recently signed out our first distribution agreement for Italy and Switzerland, and we are well positioned to reach profitabilities in three years. We received the first order from Orto Service, and we are actively working with them to develop the market in Italy, and we are looking for new partners for Germany and France. Bionic Power has a clear product pipeline based on addressing the niche of uh, Crouchgate market, pediatric and adult at first, and then enter into the wider market of knee-related mobility impairment with a different device called the Amplifier. In the last year, we proudly achieved major ma milestone. We double our staff. We are moving forward. We move forward product de development. We achieve regulatory compliance. We implemented a fully functional 13485 quality system, and we are moving the first step toward commercialization. <clears throat> we are approaching the 2023 fiscal year with the ambitious goal of selling 150 Agilic set. We are now raising in the midst of a uh, last seed raise of 2.5 million, mostly internal, which is still open. And uh, we will be looking for a venture capital round at some point next year. As a possible buyout, we see uh, an acquisition or, or a partnership with, uh, with a major company in the space as uh, our most likely uh, situation exit, but also going alone through uh, private equity and eventually IPO is uh, a possibility that we are considering. We have uh, a great team in place covering all the function that we need, including uh, electrical, software, and mechanical development, manufacturing, and commercial. We are sustained by our board of director and we have a great clinical advisory board in place. So <clears throat> thank you for your attention. Don't hesitate to contact me if you are interested in knowing more and eventually investing in the company. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. That is a very exciting innovation um, that really has the opportunity of significantly changing people's experience with mobility challenges. So really very interesting. And congratulations on your successes. Yes, we are really motivated to improve their life. Yes. Well, that's very clear from your presentation. So congratulations and great work. Next, Thank you. next we have Dr. David Kim, co-founder and CEO of Definity Solutions. David, would you like to join the virtual stage? Hello, can you hear me and see my screen okay? I can do both. Perfect. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is David Kim. I'm the co-founder of Definity Solutions. I'm also a board-certified emergency physician by training and background. I want you to first meet Sarah, a university student in her 20s who had an accidental overdose at a party. By the time she arrived in my emergency room, she was suffering from critical brain damage. What she needed was a timely delivery of naloxone, a life-saving medication that must be given in an overdose within about 60 seconds or the person could die. Although most public facilities and many citizens now carry naloxone kits, people like Sarah still suffer due to the complexity of the kits. Because when you open the kit, you find a confusing set of equipment and instructions with more than eight steps involved. People panic, and can't give the medication because it's too complicated 
and it takes way too long. This is why we couldn't save Sarah. Sarah is now among the more than 1.1 million people who've lost their lives to the opiate epidemic. In some states and provinces, like in British Columbia, this crisis has claimed more lives than COVID-19, homicides, and car crashes combined last year. That's because the current way we give medications is outdated and has three major problems. The first being needle stick injuries, second, medical errors, and third, speed, where every second counts when it comes to life or death. Now, I want you to meet NeedSwitch the world's first interchangeable and modular auto-injector for emergency medication delivery. NeedSwitch uses a pod-based plug-and-play medication delivery system, much like a coffee pod machine, except instead of your cappuccino or latte, our pods contain life-saving medications like naloxone. So during time-sensitive emergencies, in, like opiate overdose, NeedSwitch breaks down a confusing eight-step process that can take up to five minutes, into a simple two-step process that takes less than 30 seconds. It was designed by a team of doctors and engineers to make medication delivery faster, safer, and easier for everyone to use. Now, importantly, because of this pod-based design, it has applications for various other drug targets like epinephrine for deadly allergic reactions, military medicine, pre-hospital, and in-hospital uses. We'll initially focus on naloxone with a TAM of over $4 billion in North America. The SOM that we're going after is a take-home naloxone program in the U.S. and Canada, valued at over $960 million every year. These programs are looking for an effective and easy-to-use naloxone to replace the current naloxone kits, as well as the nasal sprays being used in some places, as many studies have shown they're not as effective as injectable forms of naloxone. To commercialize, we need regulatory approval with the FDA and Health Canada as a combination product meaning this will be a device and drug combination. We'll be targeting drugs that are generic and are already approved like naloxone, meaning we won't require a clinical trial. This de-risks and accelerates our regulatory pathway as we submit each drug under an ANDA through a combination product application. For manufacturing, we partnered with the top five global contract device and medical manufacturer to produce design lock units for verification and validation testing. We've also partnered with a leading pharmaceutical manufacturer that will allow us to obtain control over the active pharmaceutical ingredients for naloxone and future targets like epinephrine, TXA, atropine, diazepam, and 12 more drugs. Our team is composed of doctors, engineers, business, and regulatory experts. Myself as a medical doctor bring clinical expertise to the team my while my engineering co-founder brings technical expertise to match. We also have team members who have taken multiple medical devices through to regulatory approval and have advisors who have successfully exited from other medical device companies. Over the last three years, we've worked hard to create a fully functional MVP prototype through multiple iterations. We have a strong IP portfolio with two patents issued, two patents pending, and a PCT filed ready for national stage in over 10 jurisdictions and our patents build strong moats around interchangeable and modular emergency medication delivery systems as a platform technology for a variety of life-saving medications. And we have developed strategic partnerships with users, healthcare systems, medical device and pharmaceutical manufacturing partners to help commercialize our technology. We've achieved all of this on target with the support of our investors through a successful 1 million pre-seed round that allowed us to progress quickly through all of these milestones. Our next steps are to finalize our device design lock and initiate testing with our manufacturing CDMO partners for regulatory submissions as we kick off our seed round of fundraising. For traction, we've completed a pilot trial with a national level military partner with some really great results that are about to publish and have agreements in place to do more. We're speaking to various hospital networks and multiple health authorities and have signed letters of intent from users and distributors and have early purchase orders uh, already in place as well. We've also signed a contract with the largest pre-hospital provider in North America to perform, perform further pilot testing. And as mentioned, we're most excited about partnering with a global top five contract device and pharmaceutical manufacturer to develop and commercialize our technology while we maintain 100% exclusivity rights and IP rights to our product. 
Our impacts are clear. Every overdose death can be prevented with a quick and effective delivery of naloxone. Based on our initial pilot test, our device is five times faster than the current naloxone kits, while being 71% more cost-effective, according to a study done by Institute of Health Economics. Additionally, with NeedSwitch, the downstream effects are exponential with more than 15 emergency drug targets ready to be used with our technology. And with 62% less with conventional delivery systems and other auto-injectors, we're positioned to sustainably change how emergency medications are delivered in the future. Today, we're kicking off our $2.5 million seed round and looking for a lead investor to execute on our next with our manufacturing partners which will be used to achieve design lock on our pathway to regulatory approval. With your investment today, you can directly help us execute on our CDMO partnerships to accelerate need switch as a first to market protected by a strong IP portfolio to create real world impacts in saving lives, starting with the opioid crisis so that we no longer see this type of headline. Thank you for your time. Thank you, David. Um, really amazing um, uh, overview of such critically needed innovation. Um, and uh, I think all of us are hoping for your success to address what is a very significant problem. Um, so thank you for that. I've seen your presentation a couple of times, as you know, and uh, it's always powerful every time. So congratulations on that as well. Thank you, Andy. I, I would uh, now like to ask Dr. Mike Dolphin, the CEO of GuideStar Medical Devices, to join the virtual stage. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Um, wait, I have to share the screen, right? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much, Wendy, for uh, for hosting this event in the Life Sciences BC. And of course I get to present in the in the Life Sciences BC offices. So I thank you very much for that as well. Um, we're very excited to present. This is, uh, my name is Mike Dolphin. I'm with GuideStar Medical Devices. Uh, this is our first time presenting at this event. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, just briefly, our team, senior management, uh, myself. Um, I'm a former uh, aerospace engineer, worked for NASA for a while and uh, been doing medical devices for the last seven years. This is my second medical device company. Um, our first medical device company had a uh, exit uh, three years ago, 2019. Um, Ryan Rudabush is our uh, senior uh, VP of business management. He has 17 years of sales and distribution experience in the medical industry. And this is his third, uh, third company in a leadership position. Um, I do wanna point out members of our board, Jack, Dr. Jack Pacey, uh, many of you might know him. He's uh, an accomplished surgeon as well as the inventor of the Glidescope which is a pretty inspirational device for our company in particular as it revolutionized the way airways are, are, are managed. Um, and, and of course, uh, Dr. James Halliwell, who's on our board as well as a chair, and he's the CEO of Upraxia, which uh, many of you might know as well through Life Sciences BC and the award ceremony uh, just a, a couple weeks ago. Um, so let me just present uh, our problem and our device. So we're looking at the epidural anesthesia uh, issue. Uh, so the when the epidural is delivered, um, many of you are familiar with the epidural through labor and delivery. Um, and, and when it's delivered, the doctor will use a syringe and it'd be injecting, uh, basically using a loss of resistance or pushing on the syringe and trying to find the epidural space manually. This technique works fairly well, but uh, does have complications when the needle advances too far. Uh, when that happens, this is about 4% of the time, uh, the estimate varies, but it's around that number, uh, it causes injury to the patient uh, where the dura, the dura layer is punctured. Uh, so this is happening in about uh, 300,000 or more patients every year in the US alone, uh, at least double that number if you look at it globally. The dural puncture effects are pretty severe actually. Uh, what happens is the, the spinal fluid drains out of the spinal column and out, or out, of, the, or out of the cranium causes severe headaches. Patients have to lie down. They cannot stand up. And you can imagine having a young baby and not being able to stand up for hours, days, or even weeks. Um, oftentimes that injury is reoccurring and can, can reoccur over several months or even a couple of years. 
Um, this is a horrible patient experience. People are quite afraid of epidurals because of it. And uh, it's something that people, doctors and patients, do not want to have happen. It can also occur that you can have uh, nerve damage or even paralysis if the needle is advanced too severely, although that is rare. So what we've developed, we developed a product we call Epizact. Um, I'll show you a video in a second how it works. But basically, this is a device that uses the same kind of loss of resistance, but automatically triggers when it reaches the epidural space. Um, by doing that, it prevents the needle from advancing too far. And the epidural space is only a couple millimeters. So having a, that exact placement of the, of the epidural needle is very valuable. Um, creates a much safer experience for the doctor and patient. Gives you good accuracy for placement. It's also easier for the doctor to use than the current technique. So it can also be even faster as well. Our goal, of course, is to become the standard of care in the industry. Um, we'll see if we can. That's that's uh, that yet to be seen. So here's our uh, just a video, a, sort of a cross section of the spine. I'll show you a little bit of a clip here. You can see the needle is entering through a ligament into the epidural space, which is that light blue area. And it's only about two to five millimeters wide. Um, and presently, sometimes the needles advance too far, and you can see it doesn't have to advance that far for an injury to occur. Now, when our device is used, uh, you attach it to needle and advance it. You hold the blue grip. When it triggers, the blue grip advances, but the needle stops. So we'll show this a couple more times. You can see from the side view, when the needle enters the epidural space, the blue, trip, the blue grip advances, but the needle stops exactly in the place that you want it to, to be. I'll show you one more time here. Needle enters the epidural space and needle and needle stops. Uh, we've done a number of clinical trials with this device. Um, uh, sorry, preclinical trials, I should say. Uh, it's had great success. We had zero dural punctures in many attempts that we've done with this device. And you can see here uh, on the left is an early prototype version of this device. And on the right, the doctor is uh, feeding a catheter through the needle into the epidural space. Um, here's an x-ray taken from one of those uh, preclinical trials. And you can see the spine, you can see all the vertebrae on the right hand picture. And on the left picture, you can see the needle as it's being as it's placed in the epidural space. If you look carefully, there is a, a vertical line, you can see the contrast, which is running up and down the epidural space, uh, showing that the needle was placed in exactly the right spot. So what's the value of this device? Well, first of all, safety, 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 safety. Uh, our device aims to make it safer for patients. We're trying to eliminate these injuries. Obviously, epidural, uh, postural puncture headaches are severe. Also, if we can prevent the, those rare paralysis cases, that is very important. Um, it's also very important to the patients. Patients are afraid of getting epidurals because of how of this fear of, of getting injured. So having higher safety is obviously better for the patient's outcome and better for their comfort level. Um, the other thing that's really important about our device is that the Epizac is a seamless, it's seamlessly integrated into the way doctors currently do the procedure. Uh, it doesn't involve bringing in a large electronic machine or having to deal with the uh, sterility barrier or it doesn't involve having to have a, a, an assistant to help them. They can just use it with their, just add it to their kit and go into their procedure as normal and use it with their existing workflow. This is very, very important for doctors and in adoptability of the, of the device. The other thing, and I haven't gone into this very much detail here, but there is a cost avoidance factor. When an injury occurs, it costs thousands of dollars um, for, for patient care. And that thousands of dollars, even when amortized over the patients, all the patients that are given an epidural, still costs an order of 300 to $500 per patient. So if you can eliminate those injuries, you're, every time you use the device, you actually are gonna be avoiding uh, hundreds of dollars of costs. So it's safer, it's easy to use, and it's also a, a cost effective for the for the uh, payer. Um, just quickly in terms of timeline, uh, the company was formed in 2019. We've completed manufacturing development. Uh, we are now in the last stages of our final testing before FDA submission, which we expect to happen in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we expect to get the clearance in 2023, at which time we will do first in human studies and begin sales. So we're quite excited about what's happening in the next few months. Uh, we expect to also then go into Europe and other markets around the world. Uh, the market is quite large. We're looking at 2.4 million just for obstetrics alone, 5.4 million for obstetrics and surgery, which we consider our target market to begin with. 
but it, it easily is 40 million uh, epidurals annually around the world. We'll be looking for an investment fund uh, opening up next year, um, about $3.5 million Canadian. This fund will be used to expand our manufacturing and scale up our productivity ability as we, uh, as we launch and get uh, people interested in buying. And, and also conducting extra post-market studies, getting extra data to prove how well our device works, and then increasing our sales and marketing team and training clinicians as they use it and as we roll this out to people's use. So thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to present today. Thanks, Mike. It's a great, uh, great presentation and super interesting um, innovation that uh, obviously has uh, some really great potential behind it, not to mention how far advanced it already is. So congratulations for that. Um, next, we have, thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Aaron Elazor, the CEO of Icomet. Okay, uh, let's see if I want to share. Mike, you need to stop sharing. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can you see myself and my screen? I can see you. I can't see your screen yet, but. Let's okay. Let's see second. what's going on here. Okay, is it working now? Not quite yet. Oh, there you go. Don't do anything. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Up. Yep. Excellent. There. Great. Well, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name always uh, causes issues, uh, but it's a Hebrew name meaning being awake, which uh, my mother regretted shortly after I was born and she started losing sleep. But anyway, great. So. Imagine if I told you that there is a cure for an incurable, debilitating disease that impacts millions of people worldwide. Good morning and welcome to the ICOMED presentation. My name is Aran Elizur. I'm the CEO of the company. And today I will tell you about our revolutionary cure for emphysema. ICOMED is a Vancouver-based medical device company with a pipeline of medical devices. Our Aegis is an AI-based system that reduces radiation in fluoroscopy by over 60% without changing the image quality. A commercial X-ray system incorporating our technology was cleared by the FDA and is now sold commercially in the US with an OEM partner. Our second product and the more exciting one is Atmos, which is an innovative proprietary extracorporeal treatment for emphysema. We're seeking investment to complete large animal testing and product development on our Atmos emphysema treatment and to prepare for human trials. Fluoroscopy is a real-time X-ray video imaging, which is widely used in minimally invasive procedures such as cardio and gastrointestinal surgeries. In these procedures, a medical device is inserted into the patient's body through the mouth or a blood vessel, and the medical team uses fluoroscopy to guide it to place and complete the procedure. While this eliminates open surgery and enables short procedures and fast healing, it exposes patients and medical staff to large amounts of radiation since they are x-rayed at video rates of up to 30 pulses per second. Note that in fluoroscopy, the medical team stands in the radiation field next to the patient unlike medical imaging where they move to a protected area while the patient is x-rayed. Aegis combines a fast electromechanical shutter with artificial intelligence and image processing in a system which was clinically proven to reduce radiation by over 60% without degrading image quality. A commercial x-ray system incorporating our technology was cleared by the FDA a couple of years ago and is now sold in the US with an OEM partner. We have tens of installations in US hospitals and are currently seeking more OEM partner to expand this revenue generating business. I'd like to now tell you about the next and more exciting thing, Atmos. Emphysema is a widespread uh, 
progressive, debilitating pulmonary disease, which impacts tens of millions of people worldwide. It results primarily from smoking and causes difficulties in breathing and an overall poor quality of life. One way to imagine what it is like to suffer from emphysema is to consider the following. Healthy people make a small effort to inhale, but exhaling, unless under stress, is effortless. You simply relax the chest and diaphragm muscles, and that creates enough pressure to push out the air. Emphysema patients need to actively force the air out, making every breath an effort. In the U.S. alone, there are over 4 million patients, and while it may seem that smoking is in decline, the number of patients is growing annually. Emphysema develops over decades, and we are now seeing patients who started smoking much earlier in their life. At the moment, there is no cure for emphysema. The standard of care is to relieve symptoms and try to slow down the progression of the disease. Welcome Atmos. Atmos is an actual cure for emphysema. It's a developed, patented, innovative, non-invasive treatment using radio frequency. The patient is placed in a device that selectively heats the sick areas in the lung, causing them to shrink, and thereby enabling healthy tissue, healthy alveoli, to expand and lung function to be regained. This is an actual cure for the disease, not relief of symptoms. Our emphysema treatment was proven in work done in collaboration with the Center for Heart and Lung Innovation at St. Paul's Hospital under the guidance of Professor Don Sin. We ran extensive tests on rats and mice with induced emphysema for several years and were able to demonstrate that the treatment enables the animal to regain lung functionality as well as quality of life. In addition, we were able to prove histologically the change in lung tissue resulting from our treatment. This work was published in peer-reviewed peer articles, which are listed here below, and I'll be happy to share these references uh, with anyone who's interested. The system was since scaled up, and we are run now running a series of chronic tests on pigs at the UBC Animal Lab in attempt to prove the efficacy of our treatment on large animals and to prepare for human trials. Early results are very promising. Emphysema impacts millions of patients worldwide and we see no competition. This is a huge market opportunity in the, in the billions of dollars annually. ICOMED has a very experienced team. The founders are Dan Gelbart, Dr. Lindsay McCann, and Dr. Sam Lichtenstein. Dan Gelbart is a well-known serial entrepreneur who founded Creo and several other companies in Vancouver. Dr. Lindsay McCann is the region lead of angiography and interventional radiology at Vancouver Coastal Health and is a co-founder of Angiotech and several other medical companies. Dr. Sam Lichtenstein is head of the UBC Division of Cardiovascular Surgery. Our chairman, Amos Michelson, was the CEO of Creo, who sold it to Kodak for a billion dollars US and is now involved in several other companies, including Copperleaf, who had a very successful IPO last year. Our advisor, Professor Don Sin, is a world-renowned expert on pulmonary diseases and head of the Center for Heart and Lung Innovation at St. Paul's Hospital. My personal background is a combination of physics and MBA, and throughout my career, I focused on global technology commercialization and business development and filled various roles, including C-level roles with large multinationals, such as Kodak as Creo, as well as my own startup that I led from concept to successful exit. In addition, we have an excellent and dedicated team of engineers and technical staff with a proven track record of solving complex engineering problems and commercializing products. In summary, ICOMED offers a unique opportunity to invest in groundbreaking technology with huge growth potential and a very experienced team. I, with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention, and I look forward to speaking with everyone who would like to learn more about ICOMED.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that was a really interesting presentation. You certainly have a very strong board and advisor of many household uh, uh, and names that have had extraordinary uh, depth of experience working on, on your innovation. It's fantastic. I liked your little analogy uh, or your um, explaining your name to us. I thought that was that was funny about your mom and staying awake. Good advice exactly. for, future, <laughs> for future parents as they think about naming their children. Um, right. Anyway, thank you very much. It's super interesting innovation, and uh, we look forward to continuing to follow it. Um, thank you, Andrew. Our, our next presentation is, with, uh, is by Larry Whitehead, the president and CEO of Plasma Innovations. Larry, the virtual stage is yours. Hi, Larry. Hi. Um, can you? I can see you and I can hear you. Okay. So that's step one. <laughs> and if you just any luck in, yet? I can see your presentation. You're perfect. Perfect. Excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Larry Whitehead. Uh, good morning, everyone. I uh, am the founder of Plasma Innovations, and uh, I started out my business career in the financial services sector and uh, joined a medical equipment, dental equipment leasing company started by a dentist out of Hamilton, Ontario. Now, as luck would have it, um, this company was acquired by Citibank in New York a few years later. So. I was transferred to Vancouver, uh, responsible for a $50 million equipment leasing portfolio. And uh, we were the market leader in equipment leasing at that time. Uh, roughly 80% of the practicing dentists in Canada were, were lessees. And during that period of time, we financed thousands of autoclaves. And it seemed like the autoclave was always a problematic piece of equipment in the, in the dental office. And uh, quite frankly, it still is. So, this was the motivation to become involved in developing a new instrument sterilizer. Now, the autoclave was invented in 1879 by a French microbiologist and uh, 140 years ago, and it's still the status quo today. Uh, it has many fundamental disadvantages. The cycle times are long and uh, not all instruments can withstand heat and steam, and it's uh, environmentally unfriendly. Um, we are developing the plasma clave, which effectively sterilizes medical and dental instruments in under three minutes without the use of water, heat, or chemicals, making just-in-time sterilization a reality. Um, the main advantage of our plasma clave is that it, it's quick, and I'll just show through the advantages. Uh, we have roughly a three-minute cycle. Uh, nothing survives after three minutes in, in a plasma uh, container. Uh, an autoclave with, if you include cooling and drying, um, it's anywhere from 45 to a 60 minute cycle. Uh, the plasma clave uh, will not damage heat sensitive items, items that have electronics, and the instruments are delivered cool. Uh, it's called a cold plasma for a reason and uh, can be used immediately in a surgical process, whereas uh, instruments coming out of an autoclave at 122 degrees Celsius can't be utilized until they cool down. Now, another main advantage is, is uh, the plasma clave only draws approximately 50 watts of energy for a short three minute cycle. And you compare that to an autoclave, uh, draws upwards of 5,000 watts for a much longer cycle. The plasma clave is movable, can be moved from operator to operatory, whereas the autoclave must be plumbed in. And uh, wastewater is, is a big problem, especially in other countries uh, where it's an environmental issue. issue. And it's lightweight and, uh, you know, whereas an autoclave isn't. Um, went one slide too many there. Uh, looking at the price, autoclaves range anywhere from $6,500 up to around $12,000. And most of them have uh, upwards of a 60-minute cycle if you include drying and cool-down time. Uh, now, in looking at competition, uh, you can't only look at price, but... The installation costs for a sterilization suite, including the cost of an autoclave, plumbing, electrical, wastewater disposal, are in the vicinity of $20,000.
Obviously, these costs are not incurred with a plasma plate, which is simply a plug and play device. Uh, second point, the equipment operating under high pressure and high temperature with an extended cycle time require frequent repairs. This is not a factor with the plasma clave and operating costs are greatly reduced. Um, you don't need electricity. Uh, I'm sorry, you don't need water. Electricity is only 50 watts for a three minute cycle and there's no wastewater to dispose of. And now the users are, uh, of course, every healthcare uh, clinic and facility, dentists, uh, MDs, veterinarians, uh, the plasma clade may be a great boon to uh, remote healthcare facilities like field hospitals and doctors without borders where uh, power is a problem or, or clean water is a problem. Uh, the plasma clade could actually be operated with a 12 volt uh, battery or a laser or a, a solar cell. And there's many non-medical applications, uh, including manufacturing. Uh, we only require a 510K regulatory clearance. We do not require human trials for the plasma clave. Uh, looking at the market, it's a global healthcare market. Uh, we've looked at the top uh, 20 countries in the world, uh, primarily looking at dental category. There's 25,000 dentists, uh, practicing dentists in Canada. Brazil has the largest number of practicing dentists, which is over 240,000. Uh, in just 20 countries, there are over 11, 11 million uh, healthcare facilities and assuming a retail price of $10,000 per device would represent a global market of over $100 billion. And just 1% of that market uh, equates to over a billion dollars in sales. Now our development plan, uh, currently we're still completing our commercial design and securing relative regulatory clearance. We need roughly $3 million for that process. Then we go into uh, marketing, or I tend to sign three dealer contracts. And the third phase would be to expand to other countries. Um, Leadership uh, got an MBA from the University of Washington. David Coriel uh, works with us. He's got uh, time with American Hospital, Dense Blind, Dental Lees. And Brian Cameron uh, used to work with the BC Securities Commission. Uh, you may know the fellow that presented earlier. Our uh, healthcare advisory team, Lance Hazelton, is our chief uh, dental advisor. He's a prosthodontist on Broadway. Tom Elliott is an endocrinologist, uh, head of the BC Diabetes Association, and he's our medical staff at VGH. And Scott Phillips is uh, uh, head of our engineering team at Starfish Medical. Many of you, know, many of you probably know Starfish Medical, uh, excellent company, been in business for over 20 years. All they do is work on medical devices. They've got offices in Victoria and Toronto and uh, over 120 employees, most of them engineers. So it's just a great firm that we've worked with for two or three years now. Um, significant milestones, uh, plasma, the contamination is university research proven. Uh, beta model has been successfully laboratory tested. Starfish has been engaged. Our sales and marketing strategy is fully developed. We have an excellent relationship with Henry Shine, which is the largest uh, dental, medical, and veterinary equipment supply company in the world. They trade on the New York Stock Exchange, if you haven't heard of them. Uh, we have a, a letter from them expressing a desire for a commercial relationship. And they've also introduced us to one of their venture capitalists uh, in New York. And the name Treadma, Plasma Clave is trademarked in several companies around the world. Uh, we're looking for $3 million. Most of that will be paid to Starfish Medical. And uh, in our growth phase, I mentioned we would be entering into three dealer contracts, Henry Schein obviously being the first one. We also have a relationship with Patterson Dental and Sinclair Dental for distributing in the dental markets. And a third one is SICAN, which is a Canadian firm recently acquired by Coltein in Switzerland, and they're a leader in autoclave sterilization. And uh, many dentists are now ordering their uh, sundry items online, so Amazon may be a potential uh, online purchase for the device. Uh, now, in summary, the plasma clave uh, will deliver a paradigm shift in the sterilization of uh, instruments. I like to use the comparison of the what the computer did to the typewriter. The last IBM Selectric typewriter was uh, manufactured in 1986 after the computer was uh, in use. The science is laboratory proven. We have several uh, studies, uh, university studies that prove uh, the plasma cleans up to 10,000 times better than autoclaving. Uh, we're securing IP protection, Starfish is filing IP, and we have trade bikes filed in several countries around the world. It's a huge global market. 
And our goal is to install a plasma clave in every healthcare facility around the world. So thank you for your time and uh, my contact information is here. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, Larry. That's uh, super exciting. Nice to see um, how far the innovation has come and uh, the very clear uh, next steps and prospects for growth. It's, it's, very, it's very exciting. Um, with that, I'm going to close off this session. And so thank all of our presenters um, for being a part of this. A really exciting um, uh, group of companies that have really uh, different and interesting innovation that in, in all cases has the opportunity of really changing, whether it be treatments or safety or prospects for um, you know moving, moving ahead and helping our healthcare system. Thank you for those that have posted um, in the chat or questions. Uh, we really appreciate that, um, that participation. Please, we encourage you to reach out to the companies um, directly if you're interested in setting up meetings and the companies, we encourage you to reach out to the participants. Um, as a summary, as we've said, we've got our company guide that will refresh your memory on what everybody is doing and how to contact them. And uh, yes, and thank you for our innovators for coming and presenting. Um, the innovation is super exciting. In our next session, we will hear remarks from our technology sponsor, Owen Wiggs, and our session sponsor, Nimbus Synergies. And following their remarks, we're gonna have a couple of pitches from digital health companies. So we will see you back at 11 PST, which is in 30 minutes. Thank you, everyone.